everybody, I'm Jen and welcome to my channel. Um, if you are returning, thank you. If you are new, I am a woman in long-term recovery. I am also a CARC, a SERPA, I'm a rape crisis counselor, and I am a trainer of the Narcan. So if you guys need Narcan, please don't hesitate to reach out. I'm super behind because I had car issues and all other types of stuff, but email me and I will get you some. The only thing you have to do is pay shipping. Also, if you guys look at my description box down below, you will find the link to my Amazon wish list, which is super, super important to me because it's how I help members of my community who have just come home from incarceration, who are experiencing homelessness, who just need a little extra help. Because let's face it, COVID sucks and it's kicking everyone's ass, mine included. So also there's like all the links to my social media, you know, some videos that I've done in the past, my Patreon, yada, 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 you know, all, all your good stuff is down below. Also, the address to my stepson where he is incarcerated is down below. If you would be so inclined to drop him a line, I would be eternally grateful for all of that. So today, today is going to be a good one. Today is your Q&A about how I had my baby in prison. So I'm going to need glasses for part of the time. So please don't remind the, the glare because, yeah, but, um, I'm blind and cannot see, and I need to read these little tiny screenshots that I have on my trusty laptop. Yes, I have little planty stickers on my laptop. <laughs> so you guys asked some really kick-ass questions, and I'm super grateful for all of them. Um, some of them kind of cross over and are the same, but you know, you guys, you really did. You asked a lot of good questions, and I'm, I'm really happy for them. So um, I'm just going to go through all of them and go from there. Um, do you think Bella and the other babies in there will be in touch when they get older? You know, I'm very honest and open with Bella about how I had her and that I did have her when I was incarcerated. I don't know if the other moms are, so that's hard to say. I think it would be cool to do like a reunion. You know, I, I think that would be cool, but I'm really not too sure. Um, did I keep in touch with other moms and babies that were in there? So for a while, yeah, I did. Um, I, Facebook was great. Um, it was, for me, Facebook was like a newer thing when we first came home. You know, you gotta understand, Bella's, Bella's nine, so we're going, we're, we're taking a back. Um, yeah, I mean, we did for a little bit, and I don't know, they went their way, I went my way, some of them got reincarcerated. Uh, I believe two of them overdosed and passed away, sadly, so, you know, We've all gone our separate ways. Um, yeah. Let's see what else. Um, is she in foster care right now, my daughter? No, absolutely not. Um, did they give me any pain relief while I was in labor? So, excuse me, I think I'm getting a cold. Um, for me, <clears throat> I was very, very honest about the fact that I was an opiate addict. And immediately I said to them, I am a woman in recovery from opiates um, and I don't want any narcotics. So they gave me, at one point in time, I had to have something because, well, I had to. <laughs> Childbirth is real. But they did give me an epidural. Um, they actually gave me too much of an epidural and it was counterproductive, I guess, in a sense, because my legs were shaking while I was in labor and it was super difficult. I think it made a hard situation harder and then I like couldn't get up and go pee because my legs wouldn't stop shaking yeah um was my family able to visit with me and see baby Bella so my parents didn't meet Bella until I came home when I first got pregnant with Bella they did not want me to have her they wanted nothing to do with me they did not support my pregnancy they did not support me through my entire pregnancy or basically for the first eight months of Bella's life. They had nothing to do with her or I. Um, does my daughter know she was born in prison? So I actually just did a whole TikTok about this. Absolutely. Um, I waited a long time. She was probably like five or six years old before I told her she was born in prison. But it, <laughs> whatever's done in the dark comes to the light, right? So whatever I had told her if I hadn't told her the truth, somebody would have told her, uh, also known as my mother. And I felt like it was very important for Bella to hear it from me. She needed to hear her birth story from me. So um, Bedford gives you a set of pictures every month. You get like two or three pictures of your baby. And I made a photo album of that. And I recently just went through all that with Bella and she was able to see it. Um, let's see. 
Do you deal with people judging you for having her stay with you in prison? Absolutely. You know, people say all the time, like, oh, how dare you? How could you? How this? How that? I got taught how to be a mom because I was incarcerated. Um, there was a woman in there who was a fellow inmate. Her name was Leanne Armanini. She was sentenced to 25 to life. Uh, she was the nursery aide, so she was the inmate who came up and helped the other inmates with their kids and you know projects around the nursery and managing donations and who giving out supplies for the babies and stuff. And because of her, I knew how to clean Bella's belly button. I knew how to clip her nails. I knew how to look for certain things. I learned how to be a mom and how to advocate for her. And I learned that, you know, it's okay to like wake up and cry and it's okay to not immediately know how to be a mom. So people who say that, they have no clue. And I'm also, I'm going to say this right now because I think, yeah. So the next question is, what were your thoughts? What were your thoughts? Do you remember when you were first have her? So I want to say this right now because I feel like there's a lot of mom shaming that goes on. I was not one of those moms and I, and I truly believe there are more moms than admit this. I did not give birth and all of a sudden say, oh my God, you were the love of my life. My, I see dubs and roses and whatever other bullshit they feed you. I was scared shitless. I did not know how to be a mom. And now all of a sudden here's this little tiny gray baby, you know, sitting on my chest. I did not know what to do. She was not the immediate love of my life. That came later on after I got to know her and she got to know me and we built a bond and a rapport and a relationship. It did. She did not get laid on my chest and I thought, this is the best moment of my life. I was scared. I did not know what to do. I did not know what to say. Shit, I didn't even know how to act. I mean, I hate when moms say like, oh, you, you, you didn't love your baby right away. No, I, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what this was. This has never happened to me. And then you go through the trauma of childbirth and especially the position that I was in. I was an inmate. I was I was in a bed surrounded by corrections officers. Like it was there was nothing romantic or fairy tale like about it at all. I was blessed and now I can see it. Then I didn't really know, but it was a blessing that I was able to have her and keep her. But no, I, I hate moms that make you sound like a bad mom if you immediately didn't think the sun shined out of your child's ass and there wasn't doves and, you know, church bells in the background. That's not reality for a lot of moms and it definitely was not reality for me. So please don't let anyone mom shame you to think that there's something wrong with you because, you know, the world didn't drop at its knees because you became a mother. Later on, I mean, the bond that I have with that baby now, I will cut your whole face off if you try and hurt that baby. And that, that developed, you know, as the weeks went on, that bond between her and I grew stronger and stronger. And yes, a month into it, yes, I would have moved heaven and hell for her like I will now. But in the beginning, nah, bro, I didn't, I didn't know what was going on. I, my, my, everything was swollen and sore and hurt and Things were coming out of my boobs and all other types of things. I, I didn't know what the hell was happening. Um, let's see. Do you do I have to reimburse the state for anything as far as for for her childbirth? No. But this is the thing. And in New York State, all nursery moms are given federal insurance. We're given Medicaid. So the Medicaid that you would have out on the street, you have on the inside as well too. So it's not the prison per se, say, footing your bill. It would just be like if you had Medicaid or Medicare or whatever on the outside. Um, what were my options for dealing for discomfort for pain? Like I already said, I was able to get pain medication. Um, let me see. Did, oh, did they provide anything for her? Girl, let's talk about it. Okay, they provided, so Bedford Hills itself is in a very, very wealthy area in Westchester, New York. The donation game in that area is strong as all fuck. Bella had baby Uggs. Like, that baby had everything. That's why people are like, oh, you kept your baby in the prison? Yeah, she had more than your baby did. So, if you could go back and change anything about your guys' stay, what would it be? That's like a super good question, and um, I don't know. <laughs> I truly don't know. Um, hmm. I don't know, but that's a good one. You stumped me, which does not happen often. Let's see, next one. So another one asking, like, did, were you allowed to get drugs during your birth and whatnot? Did you feel like you would be able to protect her? Yes. 
So the nursery is segregated from the rest of the facility. Bedford is kind of like on a hill and at the bottom of the hill is where the nursery moms and the babies reside. So I didn't, I know this is gonna sound weird to say, but respect is a very big thing inside the prison. And that's no different, like, as a nursery mom, and I've said this, I think in a TikTok or a previous video, I don't know. Like as a nursery mom, you're almost treated like a celebrity in a sense. And the other inmates will protect you and your baby because it's a baby and it's a baby. Um, were you ever scared that someone was gonna harm your baby in prison? Well, I kinda just answered that. Absolutely not. I mean, no, I really truly wasn't. I, I really wasn't. I was I was blessed. I had a bunch of good moms uh, on the nursery and I, no, I just really wasn't. Um, do I have PTSD from the experience and would I be okay with another baby? That's like a really good question. So yeah, um, I don't know why this is making me emotional. I do have a little bit of PTSD for how I gave birth to my baby and I almost kind of have a little bit of jealousy to moms that had their baby in the real world. I was all alone. Um, nobody held my hand. Nobody, you know, nothing. And I don't know what it's like to have a regular pregnancy or have a baby shower or wear maternity clothes or have your baby in the room with you or... Um, get a sonogram or a 3D one or whatever it is these days that people are doing. And I don't, I don't have that experience. I don't know what it's like to bring your baby home from the hospital and be with your partner and take turns and, and all that. Like, I don't, I don't know any of that. And I never will. I'm 41 now and Jared and I have decided not to have children. And some days I regret that decision and some days I don't, but yeah, I mean, I, I, that is a good question, girl. Who is that? I think it says Natalia, Natalie, Natalia. I don't know. It's so I took screenshots off Instagram. That was not a good idea. But yeah, I do. I do. And I do have some regret, you know. Um, I regret the fact that when Jared and I first got together, we didn't have children. On one hand, I'm super grateful because we were active in our addiction and it would not have been a good place for a child. But now that we're where we are, I would love to have a baby with him. But that's just not in the cards for us. Um, were you treated better when you had your daughter with you than any other time you were in prison? Yes. All the way, yes. Like I said earlier, you know, when you have a baby in prison, you're almost like a celebrity and everybody wants to be nice to you and help you out and whatever because babies, you know, inside a prison, there's not a lot of joy to begin with. And then when you go and you add a baby into it, babies bring joy naturally. So when you're incarcerated, they're a big source of joy. It's babe, and when you're so for Bedford, let me let me say that for Bedford, when you're incarcerated, the um, most popular programs are the babies and the puppies because, well, I thought felt his hair on my shoulders. Sorry, babies and puppies. You know, I mean, yeah. Um, if a baby got sick, were moms allowed to go to the doctor with the babies? Great question. So every Thursday was pediatrician day. The pediatrician used to come into the facility with her nurse and she'd come onto the nursery unit and they had a separate room where you would go in and basically just have like a doctor's visit with you and your baby and you would go in. And that's how I found out that Bella had something called torticollis, um, which is basically like the old school version of Rynak and she had to wear a little hot pink molding helmet. She looked like a pink Power Ranger. I think I actually still have it. I'll, I'll have to show you guys. It was, she was so fucking cute. Um, let's see. Hmm. Could your family see her more? Okay, so could your family see her more often than regular prisons? So because Bedford is a maximum facility and they have lifers, they have visit day every day. Like on the weekends is when they do by like name or number, name. But during the week, Monday through Friday, anyone can have visits during visiting time, which is like 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. or something. So yeah, if my family visited me, <laughs> they could have, um, but they did not. How is the birthing experience? <sighs> so the birthing experience was okay, but I don't have anything else to compare it to. I was not treated badly. The nurse that was in there was amazing. So I can't complain. 
Um, were you ever scared that maybe you couldn't be the mom she deserved? Uh, was I? You mean am I? Every day. Every day I wonder, or I worry, I guess I should say, that I am not going to be the mom that she deserves. Every day I have self-doubt. Every day I'm scared that I'm not going to be able to give her the best mom she deserves because she's amazing and she deserves the best mom. So yeah, every day. I think that's all of them. And I think you guys ask such great questions and I'm super grateful for them. So yeah, I doubt myself as a mom every day, but I think that's just part of being a mom, right? You know, I work with countless moms and then I have friends that are mothers and, you know, family members and whatnot. And I think we all doubt ourselves as moms. Being a mom, like, momming is fucking hard. Being a parent and trying to make the right decisions for yourself, but then also trying to make the right decisions for this tiny little amazing person. And like I said, when I first had Bells, I I was not like head over heels in love. I, I wasn't. And, and I think that that's okay. And it's okay to admit that. Nobody should make you feel bad about that. Baby blues are like a real thing and I suffered from them. I mean, look at the situation of my birth, right? Thank God it was not as traumatic as some other people. You know, my best friends included. I mean, her baby got taken from her. I'm super blessed that that did not happen. But, you know, now I look at her and I'm amazed by her. Like, I think to myself, did I really create that? Did I really make that? Like, is that, I, I did that. And I'm proud doesn't even begin to <laughs> I don't even have words for what I feel when I look at her she's amazing and I say it all the time anything good that's in my life is in that little girl she's amazing and I absolutely love her and I only hope that in the future her and I get the chance to rebuild our relationship even more and I am so proud to be her mother and if I was to die today all the other stuff in my life is irrelevant the fact that I am her mother it's the greatest thing that I could have ever asked for and I didn't even want a baby <laughs> So now that I'm crying on you guys and we're like 20 minutes in, um, this was awesome and I appreciate this and this, this was, I needed this for right now and I'm really grateful to you guys for these questions and if you guys have any other videos of mine that I've done that you have questions on, please let me know in the comments down below and I'll do another, you know, question on Instagram so you guys can ask your questions and, you know, I'm only one message away. I have a lot of stuff going on right now, as you all know. Please, please, please continue to write Anthony and I will keep you updated. So right now it's looking about a year for Anthony. We are going to try and make that as comfortable as possible for him. And y'all just continuing support and letters will be great. Remember guys, we recover motherfucking loudly so those behind us don't suffer in silence. And I hope you guys all have a great weekend and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.